Good morning. Good Monday morning. Hope you're having a great morning. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you did all kinds of cool stuff. I think all I did was work, but I got some work done, so that was good, right? Yep, that's about all I did for the weekend was work. <laughs> so, But that's okay. It's okay to work, right? Uh, Ecclesiastes and Proverbs talk about how there's profit in all labor, it says. So it's, it's profitable for you to work. So it's a good thing to work, right? It's a good thing to do positive things. It's a good thing to, to, to invest in yourself and in your life, right? So, so I encourage you. It's okay to work on the weekend, but hopefully you'll find time to take time off too because it's also beneficial to rest as a matter of fact god rested on the seventh day he created everything and then he went this is good and he just sat back right and then we're encouraged to enter into a sabbath rest ourselves a rest that comes from god because we're not fighting to be saved anymore we're not fighting you know we may be fighting a fight of faith because we're trying to hold on to faith we may be fighting to to grab hold of that peace and let it rain in our hearts right but we don't have to fight to be saved. God's already saved us. We're, it's done. The, the, that battle is over. Jesus said, that's done. It's finished. Completed. Right? It's all yours. So we don't have to fight for that. Right? Anyway. So, uh, so I hope you had a good weekend, even if you had to work. <laughs> right? So everything's good in the kingdom. The righteousness, peace, and joy in the kingdom. Everything. So we, and we don't, we don't turn the kingdom off because of the weekend. Right? And we don't turn it on because it's Monday morning. Oh, it's time to get back in the kingdom of God. No, we live in the kingdom of God. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. It, it's And God is always reigning. He doesn't stop reigning for the weekend. He doesn't stop being king because we have a holiday. He is always God and he is always on the throne. No matter what happens in our lives, good or bad, right? He didn't go, okay, you got it. I'll see you later. But he didn't say, oh, it's too bad for me. I don't even want to look at that. I don't want to know what happens. No, he's always on. And he's always with us no matter what. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk about this morning. I don't remember what I called it. I think I called it the response. No, listening. I call it listening. I started to call it the response because what I'm talking about this morning is found in Acts 16. And, and Paul and Silas have found themselves in prison pretty much for preaching the gospel, right? They had a... a, a, a woman had come out with a demon and Paul cast it out. You have to read it in Acts 16, starting at about verse 16, actually. And, and uh, he said, her, when he set her free, when God set the woman free, she no longer wanted to make idols, right? Because he, God set her truly free from those things that bound her. She's no longer wanting to pursue idolatry. And, and so the people who made the idols and uh, were upset because it's always about the money, right? It's still the same fight today. It's always about the money, right? They don't care if you get addicted to cigarettes and can't get away from them because they're making money on your addiction, right? I mean, we could just outlaw it, right? We don't care if people drink and drive and kill other people because the alcohol makers want to make money. Boy, I'm off on one now, right? But it was all about the money. I'm just giving you an example, modern day examples of, of how it was about the money. And that's what got Peter, Paul, and Silas thrown in prison. And not only that, they were so angry, it says they beat, they stripped and beat them with wooden rods. Now, our term for that today is, a, it would be a caning. But they, they take their shirt off and they just beat their backs with wooden sticks, with ro wooden rods, right? It says they were severely beaten. Not just a little bit, not just bruised. They were, their skin was broken. They were severely beaten. And then they were thrown into prison. And the jailer was told to make sure they didn't escape. So out of fear, he, he didn't want to take any chances, it says in the New Living in verse 24. It says, so he took them to the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Now, these guys were being treated like hardened criminals. They were preaching the word of God. And their response was not what you would think. Their, their response was not what. I would have done, <laughs> maybe after I bawled and squalled a little bit, but it says about midnight, here they are, their feet are clamped into huge, probably cast iron stalks, their backs are bleeding, they've been beaten, they had to have been in pain, and then their body was in some sort of shock to some degree, right? And around midnight, it says, Paul and Silas were crying and whining and asking, no, no, no. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Whoa, what a response, right? 
that they were singing hymns to God. You know, and I don't, they were probably singing song, some of the Psalms, but what a heart of worship. And when we start realizing that our songs aren't just captured in our corporate worship, which is a great place to sing. It's wonderful to worship corporately and with others and be on that same page worshiping God. But our worship is geared to God, not the crowd. They were alone worshiping God. But here's the part I want you to get. The other prisoners were listening. Now, God was listening, too, because there's fixing to be a big earthquake, and he's going to set them free, and then the jailer's actually going to end up feeding them and doctoring their wounds that were not doctored. They were left there with open wounds, just left to fester and get infected and hope you survive, maybe you won't type thing, right? That's just the way it was back then, right? And uh, so, but it says the other prisoners, prisoners were listening. You know, we talked about so much about the the two times that Jesus calmed the season, and uh, I both times I said, you know, but there were other boats on the water. The disciples probably weren't the only boats out there. And when Jesus spoke to the sea, it calmed it for everybody. Everybody was listening. Everybody was paying attention. Maybe they didn't see Jesus because they didn't. They didn't. They he didn't broadcast it live on Facebook right when he did it, so they didn't see. But Jesus, when Jesus calmed that sea, anybody else in that sea reaped the benefit of what God did, what Jesus did for those disciples. So here they are in the, in the middle, in the middle of the night and it's dark because it says the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open. He assumed they had escaped. So he drew his sword. He grabbed a light. So he said, trembling with fear, he, the jailer called for light and ran to the dungeon. It was dark. It was one of the worst places you can imagine being. And here they were praising God and the other prisoners heard it. They what a what a testimony to be and, and the other prisoners weren't there for preaching the gospel. They could have been there for murder. They could have been there for and we want to rank our sins, you know, based on what we think is worse. But any sin is a sin. But Paul and Silas had not sinned at all. Right. And so they were in there with people who had done really bad things or maybe even some moderate things. Maybe there's some other Christian uh, prisoners. You don't know who was there, but the prisoners, it says, were listening to them in the they couldn't see them because the prison was dark. But the other prisoners were listening. There's always someone listening in the dark. You know, maybe and they, they're listening. What are they listening for? Maybe they're listening for that voice of hope to come from you. Even in the middle of your storm, even in the middle of your trial, you can sing hope, right? Even in the middle of, of a prison, something that's keeping you bound in this life, there's still gonna there's still joy. There's still peace. They had to have had total peace to be praying. I don't know that I would have done that, but they had to have had total peace to go, you know, let's who this is this is hard. My back hurts. How about you? Yeah, mine kind of hurts too. So, well, let's just praise God in the middle of the mess. We'll praise God and see what comes up. And guess what happened? God joined in, and the whole place shook, and they were all they were set free. And they end up in the rest of the chapter. They end up going free. But let me encourage you today that no matter what you're going through, somebody's watching, somebody's listening. And somebody can actually draw hope and and courage and encouragement and strengthening from watching what you're going through, right? Because they they see that God is carrying you and that becomes your testimony. It becomes a testimony of grace. It becomes a testimony of of God's mercy. It becomes a testimony of his 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 ability to watch over us, to his keeping power because he keeps that part of us that doesn't isn't subject to the jail, right? He keeps that part of us that isn't subject to life's uh, troubles and trials. He keeps our soul and nothing can get into our soul because he's got that. This body, it may go through all kinds of trials. This mind may run through all kinds of problems in any given day, but our soul, God keeps that. We are saved in, in the best sense of the word. Our soul is whole. Even if our body's broken, our soul is in one piece because God's got it in his hand. No matter what, if this, even though our body's aging, our soul is the same, right? He keeps us. He's the keeper and sustainer of our soul. And that's what our testimony becomes when people see us go through things and we continue to praise God. Why? Because God doesn't change because the body is broken. God doesn't change because circumstances go awry. God doesn't change 
when there's a pandemic. That's why we started this devotional, right? God doesn't change. The kingdom of God is still thriving. The kingdom of God is still righteousness. The kingdom of God is still peace. And the kingdom of God is still joy right in the middle of anything. His kingdom does not change in response to crazy things that happen on this earth and that's what Paul and Silas were probably singing about but they were singing to God they weren't singing to the prisoners they weren't okay y'all join in let's all sing amazing grace y'all ready um no they were singing to God in the middle of their trial and God heard them and rescued them but he already had their souls and that's why we can have peace because God's taking care of that part of us that's going to be with him forever it's all taken care of and he's sustaining that our saved souls until the day he comes to take us home or we die and our souls go to be with him right he's got us but let me encourage you someone's always listening They're, they they want to see that hope even in the midst of a hard situation they want to see that peace even in the middle of pandemics and craziness and and things that go on in this world and this world has gone really crazy guys it is a crazy place out there but we can be hidden in him we can live a life hidden in him and we can have the peace that paul and silas had in this prison cell dark prison cell in the in in their painful bodies they were still praising god and it counted and God set them free. And God will get us out too of our situations. He never abandons us forever in anything, right? He's got us. Trust him today because somebody's always listening and somebody's always watching. So sing loud, sing louder because somebody's listening. And you know who the most important person is God. He's listening. He hears your heart cry, whether it's you're singing a, a sad song or a happy song or something in between. He hears your heart. And the prisoners only hear, you know, other people only see what you let come out. But God sees all of it. And he still loves you. And because of that, you can peace out. Have a great day. Peace out. I'll see you tomorrow.